This painting is one that, frankly, I was not that optimistic about when I first saw it in the storage vaults downstairs. Uh, it was dirty, it hadn't been on view in a long time, and seeing it in the dim light of the vault, I actually began to wonder whether this might not be a 19th century forgery rather than a genuine 15th century Florentine painting. As part of the cataloging process, I thought, well, there's no real research on this in the file. It was still then attributed to the master of the Johnson Nativity, although as early as 1986, it had been published as the work of Bernardo di Stefano Rosselli. Our scholarship just wasn't caught up to date. I only discovered all that later, but first thought, well, what is this thing? Is it for real? And what can we find out from a technical examination? And so sent it over to BACC. We examined the painting with another technique called infrared reflectography. And what that allows us to see is if there's any underdrawing in the painting. Um, this red robe here is transparent in the IR, so we see a nice, um, very fluid underdrawing in the garment of the figure, and especially down here in the foot. Knowing that that's there, if you look closely at the surface of the panel, you can actually see through the red yeah, some of those right lines there, of underdrawing yeah. in the drapery. But they come very, very clear in the infrared reflectography itself. So when we took it out of the frame, we noticed that the edges had been cut down because they were exposed insect tunneling. Um, the other interesting thing was that all four edges of the paint layer were jagged, as if during the cutting process, the chunky paint was just kind of thrown off um, of the surface of the painting. And one of the other things we noticed as soon as we took the picture out of its old frame and were able to see the back is that the very structure of the panel looked a lot more authentic than had been anticipated. It's clearly cut down, but it also has a large channel running sort of at this place across the back that holds a batten. These panels that were n hammered crosswise behind multiple planks of these big Florentine altarpieces. So that tells us, one, if it's here, there must have been much more of the panel originally below, and there must have been much more of it from left to right that this batten would have held together. It would have held perhaps three or four pictures as wide as this together. Um, so we're starting to get more information that maybe this is a, a real thing, a right. real 15th century panel painting. So the question of the insect holes came up again and whether or not they were real or drilled into the surface. And we found out that the insect holes do indeed run parallel to the surface of the painting and come out in this direction as opposed to a drill which would have been just down and back. The insects when they leave the panel, leave a round hole. So those are what we would see on the face. On the side, we have these tunnels that were cutaways of the channeling through the thickness of the wood. So we started getting a little bit more excited. So looking at the painting under the microscope at about 6x to 30x uh, magnification, really started looking at the paint itself. Did it look like 15th century paint? And what we really first saw was this crack allure here is a very typical Italian Crackalore, and that has to do with the movement of the wood and the old paint, which is very um, brittle over time, can't really move, and so it cracks. But the most exciting thing that was found under the microscope was a little red wing tip at the top. It had been overpainted with a kind of greenish brown paint, um, but small little solvent tests revealed that there was this small wing tip, which was further evidence that it has been cut down from a much larger altarpiece. And looking at the other works by this artist, Bernardo Di Stefano Rosselli, we recognize immediately that this wingtip would be from one of those cherubim or seraphim which appear at the top of virtually every altarpiece that he ever made, of which there are examples including the one at the Princeton Art Museum. Having determined that this was a real painting, uh, this was worth uh, going through a longer treatment, um, cleaning that old dirt off the surface and seeing what else we would find. The painting is actually two boards of wood put together and there's a very small addition on the right hand side and there was a small check where those two boards were starting to come apart and so there was an insecure paint on the front of this. So after a minor stabilization the painting um, was cleaned. It had a layer of um, discolored yellow varnish that had been on the surface of the, of the painting for many many years. So during the cleaning we did kind of discover some quirks of the painting. So we have here a drip of, of azurite that goes through um, the red robe of the angel. And this is the blue sky here, the blue background color dripping down across the robe of the figure. There's also little splatters. And then we have little dots of the red from the wing of the cherubim coming down. And 
while you see these things when you're standing up close, you have to remember that this was a much larger painting, and those would have been virtually invisible. This part of the painting would have been well above our heads, and probably produced for a provincial clientele. Uh, the artist didn't need to be that careful. And the entire background is a pigment called azurite, and azurite does darken and discolor over time, and it had been completely overpainted with a restorer's paint in kind of a brown, gray, green color. And it, it extended over the entire surface of the background. When I removed that overpaint, we started to see a change or a difference in the original paint here to the left. It was a much thinner layer of azurite, as if it was a first layer of blocking in the color. And it's at that point that we decided to go back to the x-ray to see if we could understand what this shape was, why it had been treated differently, and also we began to notice these incision lines as well that seemed to define a tabernacle-like shape. So we came back to the x-ray um, and noticed very distinctly a pattern of nail holes. In this case, the, these nails were put in from the front of the painting, uh, and this must have been something original. And, and in a way that makes sense because you have this angel in adoration, it would have been looking at something, you expect it to be looking down at an assumption of the Virgin or something like that. But what could be nailed to the front of this old painting? And, and it's a fairly distinct tabernacle shape. I mean, we've made this image tracing the incised line to show it more clearly. This tabernacle shape is probably a frame, uh, this angel and presumably another one facing the other way, looking in adoration at an image nailed to the front of the picture. Unfortunately, we don't know what that image was yet or where this came from, but uh, this is research that might still be done to answer that question. In the meantime, though, we had to make the decision of whether to show this as it actually is with the thinner layer of azurite and the thicker here or to hide it. And the decision that um, we made is to leave it as it is and to write a label and also publish in the catalog a description explaining this tabernacle shape so people can understand how this, like so many other pictures that are in uh, art museums, are fragments of much larger works.